Okay, so I have uh, half of a 200 litre plastic food grade drum, cut in half of the jigsaw, and uh, this half I'm going to make a self wicking air pruning uh, raised garden bed. Now the first job will be to mark out on the inside the where I'm going to drill my first set of holes. Now I'm using a hole saw here. That hole saw has an 86 mil diameter hole saw, um, 86 mil diameter hole. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out on using Z square. I'm going to take 42 here because that's roughly half of 86. I'm going to spin it around on the on the edge like so, and I'm going to mark off as I go around the bottom. That is actually going to be what I use as my drill line. So then, on the next stage, I'll be able to drill roughly horizontal all the way around. You can see here I have marked out a line. This will be the line that I'd use to center the drill saw on as I drill around the the first run around the bottle barrel. So you can see that I've now drilled the first set of holes all the way around. This way. See, they go all the way around in a nice even level. Um, one tip I have learned is that when you drill it, drill from the inside because then most of your waste will fall back into the barrel. So doesn't mean that all the waste will fall in the barrel, but you'll catch a large percentage of it and it will make it easier when you tidy up afterwards. Okay, now when I go to drill the second layer, what I'll actually do is I'll offset and I'll try to drill here in the center and then for the third layer I'll come back in alignment up here. Okay, so that's one layer done, two more to go. Let's get at it. Okay, so the barrel's completely drilled out. We've got all the holes on the side. She's looking rather wonderful right now. But now we have to deal with all the burring that's come up around here from the hole saw. Now all I'm going to do is get a Stanley knife and I'm going to just work my way around these corners. Um, what I have found doing it is rather than trying to do the whole circle one at a time, I just do probably half a circle from one side and just go around and do all that and then come back. So half a circle from this side then flip the barrel over and do the other half that way. Okay, so now the barrel's had all the holes put in it with the hole saw. We've trimmed all the, the burring off around the edges using a Stanley knife. Now we're going to fit the, the slotted ag pipe. Um, and we've actually got a geotextile sock over the ag pipe to stop sand seeping in to the ag pipe. Uh, I'm just going to show you that now. This is our length of socked slotted ag pipe. Um, this will actually curl around and fit snugly inside the base of that. Okay. On one end of the slotted egg pipe I actually make a hole. Uh, into that hole I'm going to place this piece of black PVC pipe. It's about 600 mil long and I've actually beveled the base of it so that it makes it easier for the water to flow through. This will be the fill pipe that allows us to fill water directly into the slotted egg line. The other end that doesn't have the slot in it for the, drain, the fill pipe I've just tied off so it's sealed up with just a little bit of gardening baling twine or baling wire. In this end, I just put the pipe in like so, a bit of a wiggle, down she goes. And like that, you know, nice and straight down. On the other end, I've just pulled the geotextile sock over the end, and then I've just wrapped it around and then used a bit of baling twine that I had to secure it to the pipe. See how it fits into the pot. It's all curled around down the bottom. And this comes up probably a little bit too high, so we may look at later trimming it off at about this level. But it can stay like that because it'll make it easier when we're filling it up and getting it ready. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill two holes here to actually secure this to the side. And then here and at 90 degrees from it, I'll actually draw, so 90 degrees will come across and I'll drill another two holes here, another two holes on this side and I'll fix some handles to it so it's going to make it easier for moving it around. Okay, getting the handle ready. See, as I said, we've got two holes drilled here and here. We're going to slot the rope through. Um, here's the rope here. This is what I'm going to do. What I've already done is I put a, a knot just loose up this end 
And so what we're going to do, we're going to feed it through like so. You know, don't worry about if you have a lot, it's okay, we'll be adjusting it. Take my garden hose that I've cut as a handle. And we slot that over, shake it down a bit, and then we put that back through here. And we're ready to start tying this off. So I'm just going to tie a granny knot here, just a regular overhand knot. And once that's done, I'll start adjusting and I'll slide this knot down the rope to the inside here until I'm happy and then I'll cut. Okay, so now you can see, I've attached it, simple overhand knot through the loop all the way back. Another, I've now slid that knot that we had way up here, slid it down, got it right, and adjusted this so that I've got a nice handle here for moving. Now all I have to do is just cut this and it's done. And see it take shape. Right, this is the how I stop the saw falling out the big hole. So I use a, a layer of shade cloth and it allows the air to flow through comfortably but it will retain the soil. Now one of the things I've discovered it's really hard to hold it in position so and try and fill and hold it there. So what I've taken to doing is I just drill a small hole um, and then a little bit of gardening wire uh, just to fix it to the top corners. So all the way around. There we go. What I don't do is I don't put any in this area because this is where the pipe's going to be going. So this will get the uh, the pipe will actually hold this, and I'll put a zip tie through these. The pipe will hold this, and I'll put a zip tie through these two holes, and it will hold it there. Okay, so now everything's attached in place. We're ready to put the layer of sand in the base now. Okay, so now we've added the layer of sand. As you can see, the sand doesn't come up to there. It stays lower. Right, over the top of this, we'll now place a layer of mulch. Uh, normally I use either like a sugarcane mulch or uh, like a, some rough straw. And in this case I'm going to be using rough straw because that's what I've got available to me today. Okay, so now you can see the, uh, the straw layer. The straw layer does two things. One, it stops the soil from filtering down through into the sand and then on it and filling up the egg pipe. The other thing it does is when it comes time to recycle this barrel out and you know take, change soil, put something fresh in, when you're digging down you'll actually find that you find this layer and you go, oh okay stop digging any further um, knowing that the sand's there because you're not going to want to move the sand you're just going to want to take the soil out from on top. Okay so here we are out the front of my house I'm about to uh, pot into the self wicking air pruning garden bed that I just made. I'm going to plant a Navalina orange. Um, the idea behind it is that I can grow that in that pot comfortably for a couple of years before I have to even think about growing it out. Um, I've grown a mandarin quite happily in a, in a pot even smaller out here. Seems to be doing well, thriving. And as before, here's my, uh, my potting mix that I'm going to put it in. And one thing that is very advised to do, uh, don't put all your potting mix in until you have it in place. Because one of the things you'll discover with this is it gets very heavy. I'm about to put 75 litres of potting mix, 25 litres a bag, into that. And I probably will get close to filling it, but not quite filling it. Okay, time to pot it up. Okay, so now I've got... An avelina, orange, planted into the bucket. I've uh, put a bit of straw over the top to help retain moisture because it's a very sunny position at the front of the house. Um, and right now I'm filling it up. Now this is the beauty of the system. You just put the water in there and as it fills up, we'll look for it coming out one of these. This is where it's going to come out. One of these loops here. It's a fairly flat surface so we'll actually find which is the lowest hole and that'll be the one that we know it comes out of. And beauty of now, what will happen now is we'll put some water on top so it's got a bit of moisture um, but now it'll just soak up from the bottom upwards through the move it. You can see how the soil's pushed into this but it hasn't come through so that's doing its job. Now there's plenty of air will be able to get there and as the roots come out they'll get out to here they'll die off and it'll force the tree to send out more and more roots creating a very healthy root ball underneath this tree. Go. Okay, here's what I mean about the water level. 
you can start seeing how it's coming up to here and it just runs out. It means the water's up to there now. We can take this off, throw it out here on the grass so we don't. You can watch, and the water stops. So we now know that that's full of water. We might give a bit, we might put a bit more water on the top here to help settle that root ball in, and it's good to grow.